This video will demonstrate how to construct a truth table for a compound Boolean expression. Now notice that this expression has three distinct variables. That means we need to consider all possible assignments of zeros and ones to these three variables. And one easy way to denote all the possibilities is to simply count in binary. So we'll start at zero, meaning a zero for each entry, and then we'll add one, and then we add one again to get two, add one again to get three, and as we continue this process, going up to the point where we have all ones, we will have filled out every possible assignment of zeros and ones to these three variables. Now, a good self-check is that the number of rows in this table should be two raised to the number of variables. So we have three variables, so we should have two to the three equals eight rows. And sure enough, we do. Now, I could conceivably jump straight from these possible assignments to the resulting value for this expression, but the reason I've left this space here is that it's usually easier to calculate the value of an expression like this if we first tackle its individual sub-expressions. So let's separate these values from the first, or rather innermost, sub-expression here, which is B or A. So B or A is a simple expression, but we have to make sure that the results we put in this column correspond to the values and the way they're ordered in these columns here. So we're going to completely ignore the C column and only compute B or A. So here, 0 or 0 is 0, and 0 or 0 is a 0. And then here, we have 0 or 1 is a 1, and then 0 or 1 is a 1. And now, note that because of how I've written out these values, counting in increasing binary order, all of the last four rows have a one in the A column. So we're computing an OR, so one, one, is sufficient to make the whole expression have a result of one. So that means I can quickly fill these out without having to look at the individual rows. Now the next expression is B or A negated. Now recall that this over bar corresponds to logical not, and I can put it over a whole expression to indicate the negation of that expression. And since we've already computed B or A, it's very easy to compute its negation. It's simply the opposite. So I will separate this column, and then just put the opposite values here. And from this point, I have the negation of B or A and C. So now I can jump ahead to the final column, which is a bit removed, uh, and I can compute this by ignoring this intermediate result that I computed, I'm only going to compare the C column and this sub-expression I just computed. And I'm going to use logical AND to determine what the result is. So 0 and 1 will be a 0. 1 and 1 will be a 1. And then we can already see that all of the remaining entries in this column are zero. So I don't even need to know what C is. 
I know that a single zero in a logical and will lead to a final result of zero. So I can simply fill out the remainder of this column very quickly. So here is an example of how you would compute the truth values for a compound expression using a truth table. Now as you can see, if I add more and more variables, this table will get much larger and more tedious to compute. If the expression is much more complicated than this, then there are many more intermediate steps. So in the next video, we will find out how to simplify expressions like this algebraically.